Right standing that God requires must be born out of a righteousness that is not contaminated with the filth of this world. Matthew chapter 16 from verses 21. The Bible says, From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day then peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying far be it from you lord this shall not happen to you but he turned and said to peter get behind me satan <laughs> You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men. What a drama it would be, it was that day, when all the disciples assembled together, and Jesus began to explain to them, the passion he was about to go through i will go to jerusalem i will be arrested by the elders they'll hand him over to the romans they will accuse him and crucify him he will be buried and be raised on the third day and suddenly peter stood up and held the hand of jesus and drew him aside <laughs> and began to rebuke him <laughs> uh, he had the audacity to rebuke him perhaps he felt that jesus was uh, was making doubtful and evil confession i'm sure people who are given to faith confession will say i ah, no, no, this this is negative confession <laughs> this is negative this is bad confession how can you be confessing that oh no 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 even if that's god's way for him he's not supposed to confess that so he must have felt jesus was speaking negative words making negative proclamation and ah no 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 where are you dying to we have left all and followed you <laughs> you are talking of dying ah no no the dying is not part of this day in fact we will live together <laughs> forever if god permits and jesus turned to him and rebuked him hmm. but the rebuke that jesus mated to the rebuke of peter was stronger because the first word that came was get behind me satan you know he was facing peter like that and he shouted get behind me satan and you know the other brethren will, will look and say what's going on here as Peter becomes Satan, huh? so Peter is not Satan. No, he wasn't calling Peter Satan. What was happening here is that Jesus, who had once designed the voice of the Father, finding expression through Peter. To testify 
about the identity of Jesus Christ when he inquired and said who do the people say that I am and they began to give him various answers some say Elias that's Elijah some say John the Baptist some say one of the prophets he says but who do you say that I am at the asking of that question I could perceive the tension in all of them that question made them uncomfortable they've been with him they've seen wonderful things wrought by him in fact when he calmed the storm they said what manner of man is this that even the sea and the wind obey him what kind of man is this so they've been wondering in amazement and yet they were faced with the question to identify him in that state of uncertainty of trying to find answers to this very specific question suddenly Peter received a revelation the father in heaven through the Holy Ghost downloaded into the spirit of Peter the identity of Jesus and he said very specifically with audacity you are the Christ hmm. the son of the living God you know those are the two in one personality of Jesus is the Christ the anointed one the God who is to come and is also the son of God the God the man who became the son of God so his divinity and his humanity was captured in that definition and Jesus looked at him ah and said Simon Bajona blessed are you for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you this is not a product of guesswork of study it's not a product of just trying to ascertain the reality of his identity by human effort or reasoning he said this is a direct revelation from heaven you have picked the signal of the voice of my father from heaven he said but my father in heaven and so he introduced to them based on that revelation of him the church say you are Peter Petros and upon this rock that's this revelation of the Christ and the son of the living God a church we emerge a church a body of called at once who also will be sons of God and will be anointed where much he said and I will be the builder of that church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it it was after that revelation and declaration he began to show to them what will lead to the reality of that church say from that time he began to reveal to them how he will go to Jerusalem how the elders will lay hold of him how they would arrest him and they will accuse him hand him over to the Romans he will be killed buried and on the third day he will be raised and when he raised is raised from the dead the church will be born 
the possibility of having a call that ones that will be sons of God will become a reality. So the Holy Ghost will just come to manifest it on the day of Pentecost. That will be the inauguration service. The Holy Ghost will be the one to inaugurate it. And Peter said, <laughs> took him aside and started rebuking him. So when he looked at Peter this time, he didn't discern the voice of the Father. He discerned the voice of Satan. So this time around, Peter who moments ago connected to the signal coming from the throne of heaven and picked very clearly the voice of the Father. <laughs> At this point, as connected to the pit of hell and as speak the voice coming from Satan himself. So when Jesus perceived that Satan has been able to secure in Peter a mouthpiece, <laughs> Jesus said, Get thee behind me, Satan. So that first rebuke was for Satan. He had to rebuke him. To leave Peter alone. And then he went to Peter. He says, you are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God. But of the things of men. You are offending me. You are becoming an offense. I'm telling you about heavenly things that were pre-planned before the foundation of the earth was laid. I'm telling you about things that will make you be able to stand in my stead and do the things I'm doing. You are so conscious about multiplication of bread. About catching much fish. Swarms of fishes from the river, things of men. You, you, you think this is what we'll be doing? Just be gathering crowd and running from place. You no, know, we want to take the whole world. Your mind is filled, is saturated with material things, with earthly things. All you are concerned about is in this earth. You are not heavenly conscious. I know that's the state of many in the church today. Their minds are set on things on earth, not on things in heaven. You are an offense to me. You are mindful of the things of this world. Your mind is filled. All, all you are thinking about is what to eat, what to drink, what to wear. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing shall be added to you. So what should be on the front burner should be the things of God. The kingdom of God. So winning. Reaching out to lives. Saving souls. Turning them over to Jesus. The salvation of family members. Those are the things that should be at the front burner. The kingdom of God being established upon the face of the earth. The will of God being done in our lives and on earth. And when you preoccupy yourself with all of that, He will give you your daily bread. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When all of that are at the front burner, your mind is full of all of that, then give us this day 
our daily bread. Bread is not the most important thing. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So God can take care of your needs adequately without any challenge. He has taken care of the feeding of 3 million persons, over 3 million persons for 40 years. So your, your needs are too small. But be mindful of the things of God. And then God will take care of your needs. Now listen, there's a gift called the zoning of spirit in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 10. Now that gift helps you to distinguish between spirits. It's not a gift of suspicion, you know, for catching witchcraft. You say, you know, I have this, this person is a witch, I have designing spirit. No, that's not it. That gift is given to design spirit. If you, when, when Nathaniel came to Jesus, Jesus said, Behold an, uh, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guilt. And Nathaniel said, How come you know about me? Have you not met me? Who told you about me? He said, <laughs> You. Even before you were under the fig tree, I saw you there. And he called him by name. It was Jesus that first operated the gift of word of knowledge to call people's name. When the Bible says he knew what was in man and would not commit himself to them. You remember when he multiplied bread, he wanted to make him king by force and he escaped. What that implies partly is that he can design the spirit of men and tell the thoughts going on in their hearts so it could design human spirit it could also design the spirit of god that's the operation of the gift of designing of spirit when god is at work sometimes it's possible to miss him but people who have the gift of discernment who are mature will look and say this is god like when peter i mean um what's his name joseph was sold as slave to egypt now the reason why joseph would take all the suffering was because he could discern that it was god sending him as a king to go preserve life what others would see is a slave but in that slave lies the scepter of a king one who will rule but god sent him as what a slave you know many of us who agree you want to be king from the beginning you want to start ruling no if you have not become a slave you can't become a king jesus became a slave before he became a king he said, whoever will be the leader among you, let him become what? The servant. If you have not become the servant, you can't become the leader. So, he saw God sending him ahead to preserve life. He takes the gift of discernment to recognize God at work. So, he could discern that that identification revelation of his identity didn't come from flesh and blood it came from the father so he he designed god operating through peter and then he could design satan too do you understand that and he designed this is satan god behind me said he rebuked him it can also design angels that gives help you to design god satan human spirit angelic being or heavenly spirit when i say heaven i mean the throne of god that the heaven of god then unclean spirit it is when you are able to design the spirit that you will be able to identify that this thought this walk this manifestation this operation is coming from so and so spirit 
Is it clear to you? The first time Peter got to Philippi, I mean, a Paul, Paul got to Philippi, and the girl possessed with the spirit of divination opened her mouth and said, These are the men of God that show us the way of salvation. Do you know that Peter didn't know? Sorry, Paul didn't know. If that was the spirit of God or another spirit. And you know that young girl followed them every day and went to the place of prayer. And as she was declaring, these are the men of God that show us the way of salvation. She was also handing over fortune telling to other people. Say, you, see what will happen tomorrow. You, see what you are going through. Do you understand that? And he was giving these men of God free advertisement. So some persons would be forced to listen to Paul and Silas on account of the testimony of the young girl. And as that was going on, she was making money for her masters. One day, as she opened her mouth, <laughs> the gift of discernment was activated. You know, the gifts of the Spirit don't just operate every day. Somebody asked the question, is it better to have the gifts and know that these gifts operate in me, I have this gift? Or to just know that you have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has all of the gifts. So as need arise, it can cause anyone to operate in you. Which is better? Praise God. <laughs> to have the Holy Ghost, eh? And know that all the gifts are resident in the Holy Ghost. And it can choose to operate anyone through you as the need arise. I think that's better. Amen. Now listen, Peter designed and immediately, ah, he rebuked the spirit. And the Bible says he came out that same hour. Ah. And when, of course, the master saw that their hope of gain was gone, <laughs> it was not a little trouble. You know the end of the story. But they didn't design that on the first day. Of that encounter as time went on they, they, this girl making money this can be God this can be God this can be God but the day the gift operated that was the day they came to the fullness of conviction that this is not of God and based on the strength anointing that came with the operation of that gift they rebuke the spirit so this is how you will begin to distinguish what is true from what is truth. Because you can discern the spirit. You will know which is coming from which. Some people can be operating witchcraft and there is no spirit of witchcraft behind it. It's them, human spirit. They just like to manipulate people. Hope you know that witchcraft is in two dimensions. There's witchcraft that is the work of the flesh. Then there's witchcraft that is backed up by an unclean spirit. So somebody who likes to dominate people, likes to manipulate people to get his way or her way, that person is operating one of the works of the flesh that is called witchcraft. If he's a man, what he may use is intimidation. When he shouts... When the wife and children sees that, hey, hell may be let loose, daddy may start using the cane, everybody would keep quiet. The wife will hide the list of things. And the children will hide, and so daddy has his peace now. Nobody is asking him to buy anything or give anything. <laughs> Do you understand that? For the women, it may be manipulation. <laughs> <laughs> is this how you love me? Is this how? You remember Delilah and Samson? Is this? You said you love me. Mm. And then the man said, Alright, it's okay. Let's leave the matter. Let's leave the matter. Let's leave the matter. And then she said, mm. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> For the children, they have their own way of manipulation. A baby can manipulate the mother. 
will just start weeping. The mother will come, change the diaper, give the baby some uh, rocking, and then the baby will keep quiet. Anytime the baby wants to be rocked, even when there is no heat, the diaper is not wet, what will baby start doing? Start weeping. The mommy will check and check, then we'll put the baby on the back, we'll begin to... And then the mother may not be forced to always do that. Sometimes the child will be crying. There's no problem, but that's manipulation. See, the, the nature of man is a falling nature. And man can manipulate, intimidate, in order to dominate people. And that domination is witchcraft. Because God never said have dominion over man. He said have dominion over the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, the beast of the earth. Can you see? That's witchcraft. So sometimes some people are like that and there's no spirit behind them. They are just the one acting what they are acting. So, but for time's sake, I just want to quickly give you some tips on how to operate in discernment. The number one tip on how to operate in discernment is to become spiritual. But to become spiritual requires that you would come into union with the Holy Spirit, communion with the Holy Spirit, and submission to the Holy Spirit. That's what it takes to become spiritual, and that's a journey. So, what I would just advise is that you will walk in a consistent relationship with the Holy Spirit. Is that clear? Walk in a consistent relationship with the Holy Spirit. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit daily. And as you fellowship with Him, you will come to the place where you become very conscious of the Spirit of God. Because man lost God consciousness at the time of the fall. That was one of the result of the mutilation that befell man at the fall so man is no longer conscious of god can't even tell when god is around except god manifests himself you know god had not come to where adam was when they picked that god was around and god was not manifesting himself he said i heard the sound of thy step walking where in the garden and i hid myself man could discern god from afar he was conscious of the presence of god god didn't need to manifest himself but after the fall man became even unconscious of his spirit because the spirit of man went into a state of abination went into a comatose state so man was in the man's spirit was in, in a coma that's why till now you can't even pick your spirit except you begin your journey with god towards walking to become spiritual and then gradually you begin to sense your spirit down here you begin to know the voice of your conscience your intuition your communion let me not bother you with all of that um the distinction between the voice of the holy spirit and an unclean spirit can be an added advantage if you want to design the voice of god and the first distinction is that the voice of the holy spirit is located within your spirit down in your stomach region romans 8 16 says the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of god so when you hear things when you hear this if you fast pray often you will understand that when you hear things certain things come into your head why certain things come from down here? How many of you have observed that? Some come from your stomach, some come from your head. How many of you have observed that? Maybe you hear a thought. You will observe that that thought came from up here, from your head. 
Sometimes you hear a thought, it comes from where? Your stomach in your spirit. Yeah. Have you observed that? All right. Now, if you have observed that, what comes from your stomach can either come from the Holy Spirit or your human spirit. What comes from your head can either come from your mind or an unclean spirit. So that's the first way to distinguish. So if you receive a revelation and you are not sure, check again, ask questions. And from my experience, when I'm not sure and I ask questions, if it's coming from my head, I will know. If it's coming from my spirit, I would also know. Check again and listen where it's coming from. Who is speaking? You will discern it. You will know, oh, it's the Holy Ghost. Okay, okay, okay. And then you listen down. Oh, it's coming from the head. When you ask, when you question the voice, if it's an unclean spirit, it's not your mind, you will know. From a, it comes by experience. That's why there's no formula for hearing God's voice. If somebody has told you, you will speak and say, My daughter, <laughs> it's a lie, it's a lie. God doesn't speak like that. Praise God. Ah, let me run. Now, the voice of an unclean spirit usually comes from outside into the mind or the brain. You know, the mind and the brain are the same thing, essentially. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 verse 26, the Bible speaks about Satan uh, taking people captive, taking people captive through their mind. Uh, the second is that the voice of the Holy Spirit agrees with the word of God and leads you to righteousness. Leads you to righteousness. When the Holy Spirit speaks, whatever he is saying, we agree with the word of God. We affirm the word of God. We not be contrary to God's word. And whatever command is given you will lead you to righteousness. You can look at 1 John 5 verse 7 the voice of an unclean spirit contradicts god's word and leads to sin like in genesis chapter 3 verse 1 to 3 satan said as god said that you should not eat from any fruit of the trees in the garden is that what god said no god didn't say don't eat how would they have food if they are commanded not to eat from any of the fruit of the garden so anytime Satan is speaking or unclean spirit is speaking, even if they quote scripture, they will twist it. He says, if you are the son of God, cast yourself down, for it is written, he will give his angels charge over you. They will bear you in their hand, lest you dash your feet against a stone. The Bible didn't say cast yourself down. What he says is that he will give his angels charge over you as you go about. Perhaps you are falling, they'll catch you. He didn't say go and drink poison. He said, but if in the course of your voyage on earth, you are poisoned, it shall by no means what hurt you. He didn't say go and look for serpent and grab them. If you do that, you do that at your own peril. But if perhaps a serpent comes looking for you, and strikes it shall by no means what harm you so when you listen keenly and you look at the scripture uh, you will know by the spirit of god within your spirit that this is being twisted this is not of god totally the voice of god often comes with his presence comfort boldness peace and faith when the holy ghost speaks it comes with the presence of god from experience many times you just feel the power the presence surge through you you feel the presence fill your stomach as he speaks his voice usually carries the presence of god if somebody locates a word from the throne of heaven and gives a word of prophecy when that word of prophecy comes you will notice that the atmosphere will change if you hear a word of prophecy that comes from heaven the atmosphere it will come with the presence of god it will come with joy it will come with comfort it will come with faith and in like manner when a witch begins to prophesy it comes with some 
uneasiness, some darkness, doubt, fear. My people, my people, God, God is saying that somebody here will be involved in an accident. <laughs> you may have been in such environment. So the unclean spirit voice comes with uneasiness, with torment, with fear, and that when he comes, like the atmosphere becomes polluted. Ah, you say, what's going on here? Fourthly, the voice of the Holy Spirit is authoritative, revelatory. It reveals what you do not know and is instructive. It is for these reasons that sisters may easily pick the voice of God than brothers. Because men naturally are authoritative. You know, sometimes when I listen to myself talk, do you understand that? I, I notice it sometimes that it's, it comes straight, comes, you know, very strong. So that's the, how the Holy Ghost speaks. He says, Three men are seeking you. Go with them, that in nothing. I've sent them. Overtake this chariot. You know, that was what he said to Peter. Three men are seeking you. Go with them, that you not for I have sent them. Not, uh, would you like to go with those three men? I want you to go to Cornelius' house to go and preach. Are you sure you would like to go? The Holy Ghost doesn't talk like that. It's authoritative. It's revelatory. The, he didn't know three men were coming. And when he went downstairs, he saw them. And then he's instructive. Gives you instruction. He says, overtake this chariot. There is a man by the name Saul of Tarsus on the, in the, the way of, uh, in one of the streets in Damascus. Go and meet him and lay your hands on him that he may receive his sight. He, he, he said, Lord, is this how you want to repay me? Huh? Brother Ananiah started talking with Jesus. Jesus said, no, he won't arrest you. He's fasting and praying now for three days. <laughs> I've dealt with him. You go and see him and lay hands on him. He is mine. He will suffer many things for my kingdom's sake. You look at the instruction of God. Paul was praying in the temple and he says, Arise and leave this place quickly. They will not take your testimony. Leave this place quickly. He said, no, but they, they knew I was the one bearing witness when your Matthias, Stephen, was being uh, 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 stoned. He says, leave this place now. The voice of an unclean spirit is compelling, predictive, to predict negative outcome, and subjective. It drives, the voice of the enemy drives people. So if you don't take that drug now, you may die. And the person starts looking for the drug. If you don't pursue the money, if you will miss the business. If you don't go now, you better agree to sleep with him. Or else, <laughs> you may lose this breakthrough. When you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, it's compelling. It's always negative. Oh, there will be an accident. Hey, evil thing will happen. And you know, it comes in such a manner that you think that you are the one thinking those thoughts. Because it's, eh, if I'm just going now and I just pass that traffic and the brake fails, oh, and just hit two vehicles, it's always negative. That's why you need to trap it on time. Before it takes you far. And you start believing evil things about your life. You have to cut it. If God is revealing negative things, he will tell you to pray against it. He won't paint it as what will happen. He would say, this thing needs to be prayed against. You need to arise and deal with it. 